is just fantastic. Captain's Log. Subdates 220425.2. We've begun the week by purging almost every system of rubbish, which includes the main computer, along with Scutterbox Pawn Stash, which was the biggest casualty. But we really did need the data slate back for a competitive Tetris tournament. Well, it didn't quite get as many likes as I had requested to make this video, but I've decided, screw it, I'm doing it anyway, so that was just me getting more engagement. Thank you for all of that. Today I'm going to do what will be part one of a few parts, I'm not entirely sure how many yet, where I'd like to discuss the history of Amber Heard and Johnny Depp in this video, of what we knew of the relationship that is, providing a somewhat tangible timeline, with a part two covering aspects of the trial, evidence presented, rebuttals, witnesses, and the third being a conclusion and fallout to all of this. Currently, there is a defamation lawsuit against Amber Heard where Johnny Depp is seeking $50 million in damages. Amber Heard has filed a $100 million countersuit, no doubt so she can say she gave it to charity when she gave nothing to charity, like in the divorce. This trial is taking place in Fairfax, Virginia. For this timeline, we go back to 2012. In 2012, after splitting from his longtime partner Vanessa Paradis, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard were believed to have started dating that year on the set of the 2011 film The Rum Diary, a film that they both starred in. Two years later, March 2014, Johnny Depp confirmed that he and Amber Heard are engaged. This was confirmed during promotion for the film Transcendence, where he said the fact I'm wearing a chick's ring on my finger is probably a dead giveaway. Not very subtle. 11 months later, February 2015, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard get married in two separate ceremonies. The first was at Johnny Depp's home in Los Angeles, and the second was at Johnny Depp's private island in the Bahamas. 15 months later, Amber Heard filed for divorce citing irreconcilable differences, more notably that he had thrown a phone at her head during a fight, which struck her in the eye and the cheek, and that he had screamed at her, hit her, violently grabbed her face, pulled her hair, which led to a judge granting Amber Heard a restraining order against Johnny Depp over these allegations of domestic violence. I know that someone's going to say in the comments, I haven't included what Johnny Depp went through. I'm getting to it. Do try to keep calm. I firmly believe in justice for Johnny Depp. He has been through enough for one lifetime. Johnny Depp understandably denied the allegations of domestic abuse. And to support that, it was believed in 2016 that Amber Heard was attempting to secure a premature financial resolution by alleging abuse. The LAPD said in May 2016 that police officers who responded to a domestic incident radio call on the 21st of that month found no evidence of any crime. The LAPD were subpoenaed in connection to that same call as part of the ongoing defamation court case, by the way. So no doubt they will have to testify at some point. In August of 2016, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard settled their divorce. Amber Heard pledged to donate the $7 million from Johnny Depp to the American Civil Liberties Union and Children's Hospital in Los Angeles. And in a joint statement, they said that neither party has made false accusations for financial gain. There was never any intent of physical or emotional harm. About that donation though, she didn't make it. And in January 2017, the divorce is official, with Johnny Depp's attorney Laura Wasser saying we are all pleased to put this unpleasant chapter in Mr. Depp and his family's lives behind him. Having his request for entry of the dissolution judgment granted today made it a particularly lucky Friday the 13th, with Heard's lawyer telling the Supreme Court judge that Amber Heard would be very happy to move on with her life. So before we get to any of the defamation-related content, now would be a good time to go back to March 2015. If anyone remembers they brought a dog into the country and had to issue a groveling apology, yes, this is all quite important. In an audio recording that many had already heard before the defamation trial even began, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard had had an argument of sorts. This argument resulted in Johnny Depp's right middle finger being severed at the tip. In that audio, Johnny Depp is quite clearly heard saying he wants to remove himself from the situation to de-escalate and escape the fighting. 
with Amber Heard urging him to stop running away. In a separate piece of audio recording, Amber Heard admits to having started a physical fight with Depp, saying you didn't get punched, you got hit. I'm sorry, I hit you like this, but I did not punch you. I did not effing deck you, I effing was hitting you. I don't know what the motion of my actual hand was, but you're fine, I did not hurt you, I did not punch you, I was hitting you. Adding, I was not sitting here bitching about it, am I? You are. That's the difference between me and you, you're an effing baby. You are such a baby, grow the eff up, Johnny. Something about all of this feels wrong. I wonder if it has anything to do with the fact that Amber Heard is an ambassador for women's rights and domestic violence. Oh, and by the way, when she joked about him coming forward, about him being a victim of domestic violence, and her laughing at that, yes, that can also go in the pile of things and reasons why people do not like Amber Heard and would like to see her removed from every major acting role. In fact, can we just cast Johnny Depp as what she was in Aquaman? I'd very much like to see the romance of Jason Momoa and Johnny Depp evolve. In June 2018, Johnny Depp sues The Sun for alleged libel over an article published in April of that year with the headline, Gone Potty, how can J.K. Rowling be genuinely happy casting wife-beater Johnny Depp in the new Fantastic Beasts film? Things do not get any better for Johnny Depp, though, because in December of 2018, the 18th, more notably, Amber Heard publishes an op-ed in the Washington Post titled, I spoke up against sexual violence and faced our culture's wrath. That has to change. This is a swing in Amber Heard's position, from amicable split to using it to put herself on a platform and pedestal, no doubt piggybacking off Me Too, so as to claw at additional relevancy, and to champion women's rights, which I'll admit is a tad peculiar for somebody who has been arrested before for beating their partners. Women, no less. Within it, she writes, like many women, I have been harassed and sexually assaulted by the time I was of college age, but I kept quiet. I did not expect filing complaints to bring justice, and I didn't see myself as a victim. Then two years ago, I became a public figure representing domestic abuse, and I felt the full force of our culture's wrath for women who speak out. Johnny Depp is not mentioned by name in the op-ed, but this same op-ed becomes the basis of the defamation lawsuit because the entire op-ed is used to frame Johnny Depp as the attacker and Amber Heard as the victim while simultaneously saying she is not the victim, all the while ignoring what she did within the relationship. And no, no one is ignoring the reductio ad absurdum and the extreme definition of what a headbutt is. In March of 2019, Johnny Depp files the defamation lawsuit against Amber Heard, alleging that she defamed him in the op-ed. The op-ed depended on the central premise that Amber Heard was a domestic abuse victim and that Johnny Depp perpetrated domestic violence against her, with the complaint claiming that the claims of domestic abuse are categorically and demonstrably false. What we know so far is he is as much a victim as she believes she is. And this weird fawning picture here couldn't be more bullshit. In July 2020, Johnny Depp's lawsuit against The Sun goes to trial. Both Johnny Depp and Amber Heard arrived at the High Court of Justice, with Amber Heard scheduled to testify in support of The Sun. Johnny Depp's lawyers argued that he is seeking vindication, not money, and that Johnny Depp himself denies the allegations of domestic abuse, with a spokesperson for Amber Heard telling Vanity Fair that Amber Heard never asked for these proceedings to take place and has tried to move on with her life. Right, so while you continue to destroy another person's life, you want to move on with yours with some kind of magnanimous victory. How gauche. The trial went for three weeks, with allegations emerging as part of the evidence and testimony. The proceedings wrapped up at the end of July 2020, with the sun being victorious. This is the part where many of us take great issue. They provided no proof that he domestically abused someone else Therefore, what they had done, by definition, was slander. It is that. It is defamation of his good name. Changing public perception of a man by sensationalizing an allegation that had yet to be proven true. And we know this because the LAPD found no evidence. So what on earth was the UK court thinking when they decided that? 
again making Amber Heard look victorious and continue to claim that she is an advocate for DV and women everywhere. Quite frankly, it's up there with putting a rapist in charge of a sexual violence support group. Johnny Depp did appeal this decision, as he was right to because, let's face it, the decision was flawed and the evidence was bogus. Two Court of Appeal judges ruled against granting Johnny Depp permission to appeal the decision. Justice James Dingmans and Nicholas Underhill ruled that the original hearing was full and fair, with a quote reading, the judge's rulings have not been shown even arguably to be vitiated by any error or approach or mistake of law, with the two judges finding that the appeal has no real prospect of success and that there is no other compelling reason for it to be heard. It is clear from a reading of the judgment as a whole that the judge based his conclusions on each of the incidents on his extremely detailed review of the evidence specific to each incident. In an approach of that kind, there was little need or room for the judge to give way to any general assessment of Amber Heard's credibility. The English courts are a joke. Here is your evidence of it. Remember everyone, male victims of domestic abuse, when the perpetrator is female, aren't real because men can't be victims of this, apparently.